Hey guys, what's up? My name is Brad Edgar and I am one of the developers of the CF Shapes add-in and today what I want to do is give you guys an idea how the CF Shapes add-in works and what it can do for you. So the first thing that you'll notice is we have the CF Shapes add-in added in the very top on the right hand side here. That's added directly into the quick access ribbon after it's been installed. So we also have over here the auto update enabled and that option essentially allows the, the shapes to update uh, all the time and it just pulls pushes the triggers to make sure that that's that's happening to to our shapes and uh, it's an important feature just because uh, we all know that Excel can be a little bit finicky when it comes to some of the VBA uh, triggers that are available to us. The next thing is is we have the ability to also refre refresh the shapes manually so we added that option in case of course something ended up failing. Of course that doesn't happen very often but if it does you can use that that option so it's just a way of controlling the way your shapes are displaying. Finally we have in our CF shapes management section we've got the create a new shape and then we have the modify existing shape. This section is obviously the meat and potatoes of the the add-in, this is where we create all of the awesome things that we want to do. And then finally, we have a help and feedback section. Over here, you can see we can click on that help and feedback. Uh, in this case, I just clicked on help. It shows you kind of how each of these things are aligned, how to create the new shapes, and then how to modify existing shapes, then how to use and operate the control and why we're kind of doing things there. Again, we have an about us section. Ryan uh, Wells is the other developer of this project here and we are super excited about it. It's something that I've always wanted to have available as functionality. So uh, if you want to contact us or you want to check, check, check us out on our websites, uh, you've got uh, Ryan at wellsr.com and then myself at bradegger.com. So if you close that, the final thing I want to bring up, this is an important section of this of this add-in as well, is making sure that you guys have the ability to send us feedback when you run into either bugs or if you want to give us some feedback on some additional features that you'd love to see for the add-in. So now that we went through that, let's take a look at creating a new shape. So the again, under the CF Shapes Management, if I go Create New Shape, I'm going to select a shape available here. I'm going to select Rounded Rectangle and we'll name this Sales. So this is the object name, so if you were to select any shape right now, you know that there's an object name associated to it. That's what this is going to actually do here. So then we also have under the second section is uh, selecting your conditional formatting colors and then also the values that are associated to that. So under the style section, I've got two different things available. We have the three color static and we have the three color gradient. So the three, three color static is my favorite personally. Uh, what that allows you to do is if anything is greater than or equal to the value that you place here, it's going to show up in green in this case. And of course, you can change the color if you want. And then anything that is greater than or equal to this value here and is less than the value that we've put up here, it's going to show up in yellow. And then finally, anything less than the value that's placed in this section will show up in red. So we can also reverse colors just like we can do with icon sets in Excel uh, standard standard cell conditional formatting. And then finally, if you want to change, if we change something on one of the colors and we want to change it back to the default colors of the add-in, use default colors will allow you to do that. So I personally, there's two different things you can do with the value section here. We can actually put in a manual value if we wanted to or we can also use a cell reference which allows people to do and add the the settings themselves within the dashboard without having to come back to the create new shape screen so the way i'm going to do that is exactly that way so if i go to the settings my optimum target for sales is going to be in this cell here so i'm going to select cell c4 click ok and then I'm going to go down here and we'll select on the settings tab again the minimum sales target being set at 40. So again you can have anybody come in here set these targets and our shapes are going to be conditionally formatted based on those targets. So if the value within our shape is greater than the value selected and shown uh, on our settings tab it's going to show in green and then of course in between it's going to show in yellow and then obviously under that it's going to show in red. So if we click on create new shape we can click the close screen I can drag this shape anywhere I want and I'm not going to go over formatting too much but I'm assuming you understand that you can pretty much do anything with shapes to, to make them look pretty. So if we select the actual shape and we change the value, let's say we change the value to 160 
and then I exit that shape, you'll see that it updated to green. That is because our settings and our conditional formatting settings have been set to say, look at this value and that value um, in our shape now is 160, which is greater than our max target. So you're seeing a green. So if we went anything below that value and we said, let's say 75, you'll see it turns yellow. The reason it turns yellow is because it's between 40 and 150. And then if we go back again and we said something below 40, uh, 35, for example, you'll see that that turns to red. So now what you can do is we can select our shape. We can move and bring shapes forward or move them backwards. So I like to just kind of do that. And then you can also use standard, uh, standard formatting on the values within the shape. Check that out. And then finally, we all love the grouping option, of course that uh, Excel shapes have. So if we select both shapes, then we go down, right click, and then go to group. You'll see that that's all available to us. So now we can move that wherever we want. Now, if we go back up to the format, we can of course apply shape effects. If I select shadow, there you go. So now we have a shape that looks awesome based on our values and it is updating based on a fixed value. So in order to change that, we can we can refer this shape to a dynamic cell. In our case, it's going to be based off of what is selected by the user. So right now, if we select Salesman 6 in August 2013, I've got a calculation that's looking at all of this data here and then populating this value based on the sum if formula here. Now this sum if, sum if formula is based off of the selection that's being made here and I'm not going to get into too much detail when it comes to that but again that's just showing you that this can be made to be dynamic so if I come over here we know that we have a range, name range for this cell G3 called value so I'm going to set the shape equal to value in our reference or I could always put the cell and ref, uh, just the cell reference on the calculations tab. So if we just type in value, and then you'll see that that's a name range that we have created, and then I hit enter. Unfortunately, the way the add-in works is the shape will actually update, and that's just standard functionality in Excel. The shape will change the formatting back to the, the standard formatting if you don't manually add in a number, and we actually set it to a reference. So we can just change that back quickly. So there you go. So now if we were to select a different salesman, you'll see because it's associated to that cell uh, on the calculations tab, it's updating accordingly. And if we went back and we selected somebody like salesman six, so he's making $456 in the month of August 13th. And then we have somebody like salesman nine, who's making $98 and that falls right in between the settings that we have here so that is why it's being displayed as yellow so you'll see that the shape actually updates conditionally based on the settings that we have told the uh, the the plug it the add-in to do so all right so if we select the shape now again and we go over to you don't have to select the shape actually but if you go over to the modify existing shape under the cf shapes add-in we can remove and delete the uh, the shape that we've created, the conditionally format shape that we've created, or we can actually edit it. So I select edit. You'll see that we can come in here, as I was saying earlier, you can change those colors to make them brighter if you're into that. And if we go red like that, and then we just go update shape. So you'll see that the, the grouping kind of left there. We can just redo that, regroup these. And get back to the same thing that we were doing before and you'll see that this will update again to make sure that it's green based off of the colors that we selected in our cf shapes screen perfect so now that we've done that one of the last things that you can do with this is you can delete this uh delete the shape so if we come here we select it go delete it's going to ask you that you're sure that you want to delete it, the name, the sheet, and then it'll give you all the information. Click on yes, and you'll notice that it's been deleted. And then one of the other things that is available is if, if there were multiple options there or multiple shapes that have been created in your dashboard, you can then highlight it again, and then you can edit each of those, and you'll, they'll all show up in that screen.
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do have any questions, please feel free to contact us at support at cfshapes.com. And either Ryan and myself will be very happy to get back to you and answer any of your questions. Thanks again.